Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to convert your automatic locking hubs to the manual style locking hubs. Now these hubs here are the Warren Premium, but this technique will work on pretty much any manual locking hub out on the market. You will also need the spindle nut conversion kit to convert from the automatic to the manual locking hubs. Now the tools required for this job are pretty basic. You will need a torque wrench and the two different size spindle nut sockets. This one here for the manual locking hub and this one here for the automatic locking hub. And I will also be showing you how to repack and re-grease your bearings and changing the bearing seal. Now this truck here takes the two-piece bearing seal so I will be showing you how to install that as well. So let's get started. Now the first thing you're going to want to do is jack up your truck and secure it on a jack stand. Next, remove your wheel. Next, remove the auto hub cap. Now there's a snap ring right here holding the hub into place. So you're going to have to fish out this snap ring. It can be a little tricky to remove, so you might have to use a couple of picks. And next, remove the hub. Next there's going to be a little C-clip in here that you have to remove. Next, there are a couple of spacers and washers you have to fish out as well. Just use a couple of picks and this should slide right out. Now pull out the rest of the hub assembly. Now this spindle nut here has this little locking clip that you have to remove as well. Alright, now it's time to remove that spindle nut, so grab your socket and go to town. Again, this is a great opportunity now to repack your bearing, so I will be doing that next and showing you how to install the two-piece wheel seal for this model truck. We're going to have to just remove this brake caliper and put it off to the side. So now remove your brake caliper and put it off to the side. Pop off your brake pads and now you can slide out your rotor. Now remove the outer bearing first so we can flip over the rotor and work on the other side. Now clean some of this debris off. You don't want any of this dirt or grime to go inside. Now take a pry bar and pry off this wheel seal here. It doesn't take much force, it comes off pretty easily. Now remove the inner bearing and we're going to repack this bad boy right here. So inspect your bearings and inspect your bearing races in here. If they look fine, like mine do, I'm just going to simply repack them and put them back into place. Now I just do the simple method. I just put a glob of grease right here in my palm and then slowly press the bearing into the grease until I see the grease come out like that. And then I just repeat this process and go all the way around the bearing. Make sure it's fully repacked and seat it back into place. Now again, this model came with the two-piece wheel seal. This piece here goes onto the spindle itself, and then this one here goes onto the rotor assembly. So now I'll just carefully position this seal here. And I recommend using a rubber mallet or the opposite end of a little hammer.
So that looks pretty good. Just drop it in. Now this seal here is actually installed incorrectly. As you can see, it's got some premature wear on it. It's actually supposed to be installed into this direction here. It is called a diaphragm seal, where this rides up against the metal portion of the other side of the seal. So I'm gonna remove this and clean up the spindle, and we're gonna install the new seal. So just give it a quick wipe down. And give this area here a light coating of grease. Install the new seal. Next, just put a light coating of grease onto the spindle. Now slide on your rotor. And make sure this bearing here stays in place. Give it a couple of spins. All right, next we have to install the spindle nut conversion kit. Now the first spindle nut that goes on is this one here that has this nipple on it right here. Now it's very important to install this one first and with the nipple facing outwards towards you like that. And slowly tighten on the nut. It's very important to set the preload onto these bearings, otherwise you're gonna burn them out. So give them a snug fit like this. Move the rotor a few times back and forth. You just want a snug fit onto these bearings initially. Now we get the torque wrench and we go to spec. Now set your torque wrench to 50 foot-pounds and tighten it down. Now spin the rotor a few more times back and forth. And we're going to loosen the inner nut 90 degrees. Now install the lock washer and make sure that that pin on the inside lines up with this hole and it's fully recessed. And it should match right up just like that. Now tighten down the outer spindle nut. I'm gonna torque this down to 160 foot-pounds. Next, use some degreaser and clean up this rotor really well on both sides before you install the brakes. Install your pads. And slide on your caliper. And tighten down your brakes. Next, install your hub assembly and install your new snap ring. Now install the axle snap ring. And now install your locking cap. Keep the cap loose like this and just put a little bit of grease around the O-ring seal here. And then pop it into place. Now tighten the cap down evenly. Give it a quick test. All right, looks good. Remove your jack stand and lower your truck. All right guys, those are looking real good. So we were able to convert the automatic hubs over to the manual hubs. And I do want to actually point out, there was nothing wrong with my automatic hubs. I just chose to remove them so I can preserve them since these are getting really hard to find and quite expensive as well. So if this video helped you guys, give me a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Later.